Hi folks, Travis Fox here with FoxOptic.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Stream Vision Ballistics app. I'm going to be showing you how to load a profile into it, uh, you know, link up to your scope and get that profile uh, sent into the scope. And then I'm going to take it out in the field and kind of show you, you know, how that works in terms of uh, the way that that's going to place the X on the screen correspondent to the laser range finder readout. So obviously applicable to the XP50 LRF Pro Scope like I've got here. Uh, matter of fact, this is the setup that I'm going to be showing you the profile for, but I'll be right back with you and we'll take a look at that. Okay, folks, I'm going to show you how to connect and link up to the Stream Vision Ballistics app. Uh, this is going to be using the Pulsar Thermion 2 XP50 Pro, which currently at this point in time is the only device that this uh, app is applicable on. In the not too distant future, it's going to be applicable on the XG50 LRF and the XQ50 LRF Pro. And then I know there's some talk of, uh, of them making it applicable to the Trail 2 as well. So first things first. Um, we're going to go inside. I'm going to jump over here inside the device and show you. You want to make sure that you're on the newest firmware version, which at the time that I'm doing this video is, I believe it's 3.1.000. You can see it right there on the fourth line down uh, where it says FW. Uh, make sure that your device has that version of firmware or potentially, you know, in the future there might be a newer version. And then the other thing we need to do here inside the device, once that's, you know, once that newer firmware is on your device, you're going to see where they have this Bluetooth uh, subsection. So short press on that to open it. Uh, short press right there on the encoder button to activate the Bluetooth. And then down here on the Bluetooth pairing to make it discoverable, we want to click on that to go ahead and make it discoverable. So over here on our phone device, uh, we want to make sure that our Bluetooth is on. You can see that mine is highlighted and is on there. We're going to come over here and open up the Stream Vision Ballistics app. We're going to click down here on Devices. We're going to click on Connect Device. And you can see that it's, it's found my device. And I'm going to tell it Connect. And the minute that I tell it Connect, it's going to want a code. And if you look in the eyepiece of your device, you see that code. 9143 and that's always a different connection code on a first connect and then you can see now where we are live connected to the device so at this point if i wanted to turn around and establish a profile you can see across the bottom line there that i have uh, devices and then so which now our device is showing up and the little symbol is indicating that we are connected so we're going to hit on profiles and because I don't have any profiles established in this device yet we're going to hit add a profile and you have the ability to name your profiles so in the case of this one I'm just going to I'm going to enter one I've actually had to take these out so I can show you what I'm doing here but I'm just going to put one of them back in so uh, for example here I'm going to turn around and I've got one here for an FX uh, 30 caliber PCP air rifle. I'm just going to call it FX30. And we'll accept that by telling that we're done. Then I'm going to move on down the line and fill out the parameters. So for example here, I like to run the M57FI reticle. And I'm going to run, and run it in a solid green color so I can accept that. So I, I made those two changes. Uh, the, the bullet that I use in combination with this is FX's hybrid uh, slug. That is not in here, but I have the parameters for it. So I'm going to manually enter those so you can see there on the bullets and ammunition line. If they have a pretty good catalog in here that's going to give you ballistic coefficient and the profile muzzle velocities for some of that stuff if you don't know it but a lot of them are in there but this particular one just isn't in there so i'm going to come in the ballistic coefficient and i'm going to enter that and in the case of this one it's uh, 0 0.102 
So I'm going to hit the check mark. The ballistic profile or the ballistic function, they'll call it, is a G1, and that was already selected, but you can see from the drop down that there are additional selections in there. But in the case of this one, it is a G1, so we're going to accept that. Uh, muzzle velocity in the case of this I'm shooting it at 890 but mine's in foot per second so I'm going to switch that to foot per second I'm coming to come over here and switch that until it done so we're going to hit the check mark there and you can see where we've accepted the 890 foot per second I'm not going to turn the spin drift on uh, the rifle scopes height on that particular gun it's in inches and it is 3.18 inches over bore center. So the measurement they want there is approximately center of the rifle's bore up to the center line of the scope itself. So, you know, essentially you're telling it how far over the midline it's setting um, for your start origin. And then the case of the zero range on this one, I'm going to zero it at 50 yards uh, or enter the 50 yard coordinates. So in the case of this one, we're going to tell it that it's at 50 yards. And then you can see the outdoor weather conditions. It's pulling those on its own currently, but we've got everything established there to put this profile in. So we're going to hit the check mark and you can see now where we've established that profile. So all I have to do to put that inside the device is click on, or excuse me, I went in the wrong position there. Come over to the device itself, click on the device. I'm going to go to all profiles, and you can see there where I've got profiles in it. I'm going to put it right over top of the A profile, so I'm going to hit this little uh, red circular button. I'm going to tell it that I want the FX31 placed there. It's, and it's telling me not to forget that I still have to zero the rifle scope. So, you know, obviously when you put these in, it's still up to you to go out there and zero the scope at the 50 yard. You know, so you've got to go in. In the case of this one, I've got the coordinates for that. And I would be able to put those in there relatively quickly. But if this was a new uh, sight in, you're going to have to go in and actually do the sight in. But I'm going to jump over here inside the scope. Uh, we'll long press the encoder button and roll up here to reticle and zeroing. And now you can see where we're on that FX30 uh, ballistic profile. It's entered in there for us. And we're on that. And now you can see we have that 50 yard zero. But I'm going to jump in there because even though we've told it that's what we've done, you can see where the coordinate values are still zero, zero in the case of this. So. What I'm going to do here, I already know these coordinate values. I'm going to have to zoom in a bit, so I'm just hitting the plus button back on the eyepiece. There's a couple of shortcuts here in the new uh, firmware. You can hit the plus button on the eyepiece to zoom in and out, and you can hit the REC button to perform the freeze frame and unfreeze. But for right now, I just zoomed in, so I'll be able to more uh, precisely adjust my coordinates and my values x was in the case of this uh, gun setup was negative two so i'm just dialing to that and then i'm going to hit a short press on my encoder button to jump over to the y coordinate and on this particular gun that's 32.62 so i've got quite a little ways to roll that up i'm going to roll it up to the 32.62 and once i get her up there should have went ahead and left it down in terms of magnification would have made that a little bit quicker for me but um, we got it right there so i'm going to do a long press and that's going to jump that reticle to that position which is where it needs to be for that so in the case of this everything is set up and and we are ready to actually use this so i'm going to take this outside and i'm going to bump a few targets and just kind of show you how the thing works i'll be right back with you Okay, so you can see now, if I do a long press in here, again, I'm going to go into the reticle and zeroing, make sure that we're on that uh, FX30. So that, again, this is for an FX30 uh, caliber hybrid slug. And 
I'm only shooting that thing at 890, so you'll see I don't have this on the gun, obviously, at this point, but I've just got it sitting on top of a tripod, but you'll see how it's going to work, and because that, uh, you know, because that's a decently uh, lobby projectile, you're going to see what I'm talking about here, so I want to go in here to the laser range finder and show you that I've got everything turned on. Uh, this one to show range, I'll show you, you can turn that on or off if you want to. Um, likewise, you know, you can turn the ballistic calculator off or on. So when the ballistic calculator is turned on, which it is there, and then I've got the show range turned off, but I'm going to go ahead and turn that on so you can see what it looks like. Um, so out here, if I turn around and range that target, you can see where the midline of my reticle is going to stay positioned. But based on the range reading, I'm going to get that X. So those are at 112 yards. And you can see where it's placing the X for my hold position, which would be correct on that, on that particular projectile. So I'm going to do a long press here on my plus button, turn my uh, PIP on, so you can get a better idea of that and kind of how this is going to work. But... Uh, Effectively, you can see there, if I want to turn around and take a new range, it's going to readjust ever so slightly for that new range. And at that point, if I was wanting to shoot at that distance, then I would just hold the X. Um, but you can see, I'll, I'll roll over here on something else and just take a much longer one just to kind of give you an idea. You know, see how much difference that's going to make in that particular projectile. Um, versus what it's going to make for me right here. Again, if you don't like that uh, little yardage readout showing up on there, it's as simple as you long press, come into that LRF subsection, and then you know on this on this icon right here where it says show range, just toggle that from off to on or from on to off. And so now, when I take those range readings. It will give me uh, my range indication in the upper right, but I'm not going to get that range to target. You can also see there where it's showing me the correction for that distance up there in the little uh, range readout window. So in this case, I've got it set to mills. You actually set that in the app, and you can set that in uh, clicks or MOA or mills, and it will tell you the adjustment that it's making you know and so essentially it's telling you what the deviation that it's placing the x at is but this is something new uh, that pulsars came out with that this is this is really going to be a game changer for the long range shooting guys you know and or like i say in the case of this this is a decently uh, short range caliber like i typically don't shoot this thing at all past 200 yards uh, honestly much, not much past 150 but as you can see, as the distances vary in here, how much difference, because it's, it's such a heavy bullet versus the speed and the size of it, how much difference that has, you know, say as I adjust to different ranges, um, you know, in terms of where it's placing that X. So, again, just want to show you how this thing works. If you have any questions on this, uh, as always, you can give us a call toll-free. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.